New Jack has now dumped old Laura and is now cracking on with new Laura. New Laura. No, wait, did I say that right? So we've got new Jack. No, he's dumped with old Laura. New Laura. And is now cracking on with new, new Laura. Laura. Hi, I'm Rebecca Lewis with Metro.co.uk and I'm here with Judy James, body language expert. Uh, this has been one heck of a week. It just keeps getting better and better and better, in my opinion. Uh, the big drama this week was Georgia and Sam. Were they going to leave? Were they not going to leave? Obviously, we know that they didn't leave. Um, but let's watch the clip and see. Thing is, Do you yeah. want to leave? I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. George, I, I'm going to find it really hard to go through the, the date thing again. I really am. Let's do that then. Yeah. <laughs> I thought there was so much interesting stuff going on there. Mm. What were your thoughts watching Georgia and Sam when they were sat together? Georgia was being her usual quasi-aggressive self. Do you want to go? Um, <laughs> which I think would reduce any man to a complete pulp, as in... I think his worry was, what's the right answer, what's the wrong answer? And if you noticed, he, he kind of, her signature gesture throughout the entire show now yeah. is that, because she's got so many dramas going on. <laughs> and he obviously thought, default position, mimic Georgia, so there's the two of them. I think the body language behind the hands was different, though. I think she was doing the, trying to get the old tears going, sniffing and everything, and, and he was trying to work out what she wanted, because that kind of needed to be a decision that they would take together which if they were really strongly bonded they would have read one another but I don't think he can read Georgia at all so he was between a rock and a hard place and she was trying to get the tears out um, I think both of them but particularly her and that slightly aggressive tone was to do with I've been walking around here now for about 10 years telling everybody how loyal I, I am and I'm about to have to prove that I'm not and it's about to all come and nip me on the bum. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting that they weren't looking at each other as well. Does that is that an important part of body language when you're not making eye contact with someone? What does that tell you? Well, you would with a big decision like that. You you would be wanting to read your partner. Right. Um, I mean, that's like one of those things that you always get on reality TV. Should we split the money? Should we do this? Should we show that we're actually together or not? And it it was her making in a way her own decision, and. He was kind of peeking from mm. behind. But what you would have expected with what I would see as a genuinely well-bonded couple by that stage would have been a lot of silent communication and watching one another, how are you feeling? You know, just every movement of the face. They should have been watching one another to re how do they really feel? What are they trying to say to me? Because that would have been a, a, a complex communication where you want to read what the other one... Because in a way, they both needed to make the right decision at the right time, the yeah. same decision. I mean, they were damned if they do and damned if they didn't. And they needed to absolutely be in tune at that point, but they weren't. And I think that said a lot. There's been speculation that, well, speculation, most people think that George is not really into Sam, uh, that he would have walked if she had said, let's walk, because he did want to be with her. Did that body language, did that suggest that to you, that he was more into her than she is into him? I that think she always wanted to stay? His body language implied to me that it should have said, go and stick your head in the pool and don't come out again <laughs> until you've drowned at that point. I think he would have done it. For me, it's about um, gamesmanship. Georgia is, uh, she's very, very competitive. She wants to win. I think she's got career mapped out outside. I think he doesn't quite get that game quite so much. He's right. a bit more laid back. And I think he was going to be very driven by her. And I think for her, it was going to be a much more professional decision. And boy, did she have to think over there and over there <laughs> and what if and what if. Um, a really tough call for her. Yeah. And then obviously the other islanders are sort of back away, not involved in the decision, but all craning around trying to look at them. Did any of that body language show anything specific to you? Or was it just purely a case of, ooh, drama, let's watch it? I think it's what they're doing now. I mean, particularly with that little you know, those four characters of Wes and Megan and, and Josh and Kath, mm. they're so smug now, that lot. You know, <laughs> they're so much, we're the in crowd and, and they're not dominating the entire place, but they think that they are and they're dishing out advice and everything like that. Really bad advice, mm -hmm. really bad advice, but to suit them a lot of the time. 
And I think they were doing in meerkat mode, like, ha ha, I'm glad that's not me. Because quite honestly, I think if you'd have thrown that at both of those couples, I wouldn't have liked to have said who would stay and who wouldn't, but it would have been a real conundrum for them. The good thing for them was that they got to look smug afterwards and say, well, we'd have gone together. Yeah. And, and, and what they did, I think at that point, Georgia realised, and Danny was saying it as well, that she was toast because instead of them all going, oh, you poor thing, you know, we'll look after you and everything like that, it was like, that was a bad decision. Mm -hmm. um, and it diminished them as a couple. Um, she kind of had no romantic role to take at that point, apart from dragging them off something secret. How's it a secret in the bathroom when we all know? Um, <laughs> that, that, and it just literally lost the plot. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I'm not sure what's coming up next. I just feel like you're really interested. I feel like I could just speak to you all day. I, I don't, I'm not like declaring on for you, but like... You can do. No, but like, I just, I don't know why, I just feel like... Okay, so that's Laura and Paul. She's obviously been dumped by Jack, new Jack, and is now been left in a position where she needs to start grafting and so she's chosen Paul who I personally think is probably one of the more better subjects subjects uh, more better suited people in there because he's a bit older maybe more on a wavelength oh, oh tell me your oh, thoughts oh, Judy. this age thing this age thing <laughs> you know it's like when you get to sort of over 25 you must just be attracted to somebody that's like 30 something and I, it really worries me that they're using this slightly stereotypical and Danny's the cheerleader on this one Oh, he's older, he's older, you'll like him. I mean, in that case, keep Laura away from her dad when he comes in, you know, because he's <laughs> even older. Do you I don't think, though, that the thing is, she's had, she's, she was with Wes, who's 20, New Jack, who I think is 22, and they haven't worked out, so mm -hmm. maybe part of it is a, maybe I should try something different that is older. It's not going to be different. I mean, honestly, take my word for it. Just because they get older, it doesn't mean so they're more mature. <laughs> I mean, really, I'm sorry. It's like he's going to be sitting there smoking a pipe, you know, get my slippers. It, it, uh, no, that's not going to be a given at all. I, I, I think most of the guys in there are heavily immature and trying to pretend to be romantic leads and everything like that. But I mean, I, I don't look at that guy and think, oh yeah, this is the safe harbour for you because he's so much more grown up than the mm. others. He's on Love Island, for goodness sake. I, you know, you don't go on that really because you think, I'm a really mature person. I'm going to go and <laughs> go in Love Island because it's going to be the right vehicle for me. So, I, no, it, it, for me, that's a bit too much of a cliche. Okay. Um, I think anybody might be better for her at the moment because it's almost as though she's going to feel that she's bringing out the worst because the guys that are... are P pying her or whatever, <laughs> it, uh, um, they're, they're then going on to make good relationships. And also that smug thing that Wes is doing, you know, oh, that's exactly how mm -hmm. I felt, that's exactly where I dumped her. And it, uh, what that happened with Jack when he did that, and why are they all called Jack and Laura in there? Is it some <laughs> sort of, um, at, at that point, he made Wes and Josh look like, yeah, we knew that we couldn't help ourselves and neither can you. It, it really annoyed me that they, they didn't talk him into doing it, but there, wasn't, there was a little bit of egging on mm -hmm. going there, just so that they could look better. He's, he's made them, you know, as far as they're concerned, they now look like little angels, because yeah. clearly there's something about Laura that you cannot help but just dump her. With Paul, do you think that their connection, well, their conversation then showed any kind of connection? No, I mean, and again, it's so flimsy in there, isn't it? Oh, so they both know what an aeroplane is. You know? <laughs> oh, they've both flown. Uh, they've both eaten aeroplane meals. Uh, you know, clearly he's travelled a lot and he can talk to her about that. But in her job, everybody she meets, by definition, travels a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, she meets people like that all the time. I think she was probably looking forward to meeting slightly different people. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe he's going to get like Caroline a little pilot's hat, and then we'll go like <laughs> even more connection here. Or should we bring the drinks trolley round for him? I, it it's so superficial that for me, I'm not going. Oh yeah, that's going to work. Right. I want to see something deeper. I think she's very sophisticated. I think she's led a sophisticated life. Mm -hmm. I think she's probably used to people that work on a slightly different level. I'm not sure that Paul's that guy, to be honest. Okay. Um. I'd love to kiss you. I fired. <laughs> I'm blushing. No, you're not. No. Right. So was there, was there something more between them than there was between him and Laura from a body language point of view? 
I think possibly. I'm not sure it'll work after that because where was she going? I want to kiss you, you know, like give me a minute. I've only just walked in the house. <laughs> um, and he did kind of, I mean, he, the old muscles came out and he was like, I'm blushing. Um, she also, when she said, I, can I, I'm going to kiss you, she then sort of laughed and probably sprayed him with spit or something. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I almost feel that she was every guy's dream at one point. And therefore, again, superficially, you'd expect him to be attracted mm -hmm. to her. But he looked more attracted to his own bicep at that point. So is he playing the kind of blushing guy because he really, really fancies her, but didn't want to look bad? Or is he just thinking, no, no, it's Laura? Or is he just thinking, there's somebody else there that I would much rather fancy in the house? I know you watch the show. Have you happened to notice anyone else that he might have been... Like he, that we obviously it's edited to an hour a week, an hour a day. But yeah, we haven't seen a lot of him no. really, have we? Um, and I think, th in fact, the most we saw of him, his biggest scene, was in the bedroom with the guys when what was it? They said he he must like uh, who's the singer that? Um, and he ah oh, come on! Um, oh my God! Yes, in the um, middle of the roadie. It was like re again. It was oh another assumption <laughs> that you're thirty, therefore James Blunt. James Blunt. James you Blunt. must like James Blunt because you're 30. Oh, yeah, yeah look, I've got a lady in red tattooed on my bicep. And again, it was so stereotypical. It's one who didn't get up and flounce out at that point, but he, he behaved very well there. But I have a feeling that he wants to integrate in, in the very, very powerful now boys club before mm -hmm. he starts to pick his women. But then he's probably going to have to recouple and choose one soon. Mm. Okay, so New Jack has now dumped old Laura and is now cracking on <laughs> with... New Laura. new Laura. No, wait, did I say that right? So we've got New Jack. No, he's dumped with old Laura. New Laura. And is now cracking on with New Laura. New Laura. You said that right. Yeah, great. Yeah. But there's too many names. Okay. They're the same, yeah. <laughs> so that clip, that moment in the show um, Wednesday night, kind of from, from my point of view, felt very orchestrated between the two of them in a, in a, not in a bad way, but like they both happened to be up late. They both happened to be outside. What was your point of view from? You know why you're thinking that, don't you? Why? Because she was reserved for Dr. Alex <laughs> and she was uh, mugging him off royally with that snog. It was a very sexy snog, mm -hmm. I have to say. I mean, I, I tried to imagine it without that music, which is probably James Blunt or something. I don't know. Um, but. They, and, and she very much endorsed that snog. She did that facial stuff that we've spoken about before, mm -hmm. stroking his face. Um, we haven't really seen Jack like that before, actually, to no. be honest. I don't know what they were up to under the duvet with Laura. Laura old. See, we've got to call her old Laura. That's old mean, Laura. isn't it? <laughs> Young old Laura. Um, but that, that was a lot more congruent. But I think you're absolutely right. It kind of came out of nowhere mm -hmm. almost. And it was, it, it was very, very orchestrated. Um, and I think they just did it to take an ice pick and put it in the heart of Dr. Alex. And old Laura. Because when I'm she finds out, I think she's still going to be upset. Yeah, I don't know. That I've I almost feel that entire villa has stopped worrying about how old Laura, young old Laura is feeling. <laughs> it's, she's been so wounded for so long. I think they'd, just, they'd worry more if she was happy, quite honestly, poor mm. thing. But... Um, no, that was very much a display thing, um, and you're absolutely right. It, 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 it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. And I love the way that with new Laura, and I, I don't know how it feels to be the other girls in there, but the other girls are walking around, heels up to their implanty bits and, you know, 100 hours to get ready, and then this woman turns up that probably hasn't got a stick of makeup on, comb through the hair, no high heels, and mm -hmm. all the guys are going, oh, I love her, she's so natural. Yeah. Message to us all. <laughs> Dr. Alex was interested in Laura. You're not going to cry, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Alex was interested in new Laura, so he obviously has mugged off Alexandra. Mm -hmm. New Laura has now cracked on with new Jack. Jack. What do you think Dr. Alex does next? Goes, possibly. Yeah. I. I 
he played that so badly. Mm -hmm. And all right, you could say that technically, I think he's listened to the rules in there. And one of the rules is, uh, which they're kind of created mainly by Georgia, that it doesn't matter what I do as long as I tell you I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. As long as I'm honest. We've had this. I, mean, I said yeah. I'd poke you in the <laughs> eye and say, but I told you I was going to poke you in the eye. Um, I, I, he tried to stick to this kind of rule of valour that absolutely didn't work because that woman had kept him in the show mm -hmm. by choosing him, uh, been really nice to him. I don't, I'm not sure that she genuinely fancied him, but I mean, she'd given him a reason to be in there. Suddenly we saw him being adored. And it, it's then suddenly, and this is the problem, you know, he, she gave him the confidence to go and find somebody else, mm -hmm. which of course he didn't. And I think we need to remember there's a message for all of us, and I said it earlier on, if you have a um, if you have a fox in a hen house, it will kill the hens. If you have another fox in an empty hen house, it won't kill the hens. But you don't look at that fox and think that fox wouldn't kill the hens if it wasn't put in that one. Yeah. You really don't get that, do you? <laughs> so Dr. Alex I did get it. <laughs> didn't have enough women around him yes. for us to find out how he was going to be. And he when was he, pretty mean. Yeah. And he did it in such a clinical way. It, yeah. it, he didn't even like, look, I'm really sorry. I mean, even Jack went, you know, give me a hug and I'm really sorry. With him, it was just, OK, I've told you now. And maybe we should stay together, but don't don't think that I'm not going to go off with somebody else. Really, I hate yeah. the pain in your eyes. <laughs> you see, I'm being so mean now, and I'm going so much. Told you so. But um, he's still lovely, of course. I think you're right, though. That y you are right in that he hasn't really had the chance to show us what he's no, really he like. He had nobody to mug off. Yeah. So we couldn't assume that he wouldn't mug off once he got there. And now yeah. we know he did. Yeah. And it's kind of funny that maybe he's being mugged off as well. Yep. Learn your lessons, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Alex. <laughs> Thank you so much, Judy. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Uh, we'll be back again next week. Thank you so much.